Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Jen and Christian's with me and we're playing catch up from October with a few movies we missed, starting out with one we were very excited about called Night of the Hunted, so if you want to hear our thoughts, stick around. <laughs> Uh, the latest flick from the director of the Maniac remake, as well as P2, and collaborating with his cohort on P2, Alexander Aja, producing this movie. Who is no stranger to this channel. We and, love Aja. And for those of you who are just clicking on this channel, you might know that an Alexander Aja happened to make one of my favorite movies, uh, High Tension. And even though he was just a producer on it, like you said, the, he's got his little blood-stained fingertips all over this. Oh, yeah, this movie feels like like a early Aja film. It feels like it does remind me a little bit of like that early um, wave of extreme French cinema. And honestly, like not quite, and way more like high tension and inside than something like say Martyrs or, or Fat Girl or some of the later ones. Yeah, um, but this movie, while it does have its points, I wouldn't say this is a gore fest by any means. There's no, some, there is a couple. In fact, there is one scene that actually made Christian go, "Oh, yeah." There's a little bit. Just guys like uh, kind of relate but like in the like Venn diagram of movies about snipers um this movie is more hardcore than phone booth but probably downrange is still way more bloody and violent for what's shown on screen yeah and that and it's a damn shame more people don't know about downrange it came out a couple years ago sparky and i really vibed with it the few people that had seen it didn't seem to be too impressed other than us but it's a really good movie and this movie definitely has shares some similarities but it's also different. This movie is, it was fun. I didn't love this movie, but I had a really good time mm -hmm. with it. But I have a feeling once we hit the middle act, uh, people might have some, take some issues. I didn't personally take it that way, but to each their own. So what is Night of the Hunted about? It's basically a woman and she's kind of having a little bit of trouble in her life. She gets a, we open up the movie and she gets a phone call from her husband and she's going to try some fertility stuff because I guess she just is having trouble having a baby and she's wherever she is her husband isn't and while she's getting this this phone call someone opens the door and it's her lover <laughs> yeah she's having an affair on her husband who we only see her husband for one scene but I instantly uh, understand why she was having an affair because he seems like a total douchebag like and not in like a fucking like where's my sandwich bitch kind of way just he just seems really annoying and I don't I instantly didn't like him I didn't particularly care for him either we don't get much screen time with him but just that little bit of phone call you get the fact that he's very domineering in some aspects and she's and you can kind of understand why she's having the affair and they have to get up at two in the morning because she has to be there and like again her husband said well the freeways are messed up you're gonna have to take the long way so you better leave early and just very much uh, running her life and she's not that kind of woman she is she's she has her own job. She's very much independent, but when the little bit of screen time she had with her husband, you can tell that he kind of runs the show. Yeah, very much so, but her and her lover go off on to get to there early, and they run out of gas. She'll have to stop at a little gas station, and as things happen, uh, it just so happens a sniper just starts opening fire on the gas station, and, it, and, it, and our main character is pretty much stuck there trying to survive the night with the sniper constantly firing down upon her. Yes, and people come in in this gas station and people go and I like what I really like about this movie some of my pros is how we, we've seen this scenario a few times yeah. in cinema but it is handled really well it's nothing new under the sun but it's handled really well and one of the things I really like is it takes a while for her to realize she's even in danger and, and that's kind of very relatable how many of us have been you know going on and then you stop and all of a sudden that little hair on the back of your neck and you're like oh what the fuck she goes in and she's waiting to pay this somebody no one shows up and she's going back to try to tell the dude and then all of a sudden she looks and she sees this big old blood spatter and things kind and I really like it it's it happens it's slowly but then it happens very quickly yeah yeah it's something that quickly escalates out of her control I like I like that like ostensibly this is basically a one location movie um, and basically a merging of phone booth with the sniper element and kind of actually remind me a lot of like ATM actually yeah a little bit remind me of that of that 
that out that movie quite a bit. So it's kind of a melding of those two films, but done in an interesting way. It's nothing groundbreaking that really reinvents the wheel with this subgenre, but I think it's done incredibly competently. It is, and it's fun. And one of the things that is a little bit different is our character for many reasons. One, she is very competent, and she's kind of, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but she's very assertive and kind of a bitch in some points, and you don't see that kind of heroin, and not in a bad way, bitch. It's just she don't take shit off of anybody, and there's a scene where she's talking to the sniper through this walkie-talkie, and like, I know my personality. I would be being very soft and not trying to piss this guy off. She just calls him out and, and, te and tells him off, and you know, that's an interesting, especially for somebody like me, that's an interesting perspective because I don't know that I'd want to do it, but you gotta admire her balls. Yeah, I like she was a different kind of main character. I could see some people saying she's like kind of unlikable and stuff, but I, I think that's part of the yeah, point. Yeah, I feel like that's part of the point that she's like, and I, don't, and I don't even find her unlikable necessarily. I just find her as like kind assertive. of assertive. Yeah, not assertive as well as like kind of just a different character that you don't usually see as like the lead for a horror movie. She's something a little bit different. Not everyone's going to take to her necessarily, but I don't think she's bad at all. Um, another thing I really like about this film is just that it's very fast paced, although I have heard some people say that once we hit the middle thing, it does get slowed down just a wee bit. The movie's bit. weird. Like, it, it, it's only 90 minutes. It's not a long film. It does feel longer than it actually is to me. Did like, you find it a little bogged down? That I was, it's not necessarily bogged down or that I was bored with it necessarily. It just, it doesn't feel like 90 minutes. It feels more like about 120 minutes or so. I, I can't exactly say, like, it's not like the, I wasn't enjoying or invested in the movie. It just, the movie did kind of have a little bit more of a slow paced tone to it, so it did feel like the movie was a bit longer than it actually was. It does, and one of the things, and like I said, other characters come in, some make it, some don't, and it, it and I like how the movie really plays with its audience because there's another character that comes in and you don't know what the fuck, that and it's really funny. That whole sequence is probably the highlight of the movie for me, since our literal like last like five minutes or so. I really like that whole sequence where you have this random guy who just shows up out of the fucking blue. Mysteriously, the sniper stops shooting as soon as this guy shows up, and you have you you as the audience as, as well as the character instantly realize like wait a second, what the fuck's up with you when you have a whole back and forth? Is this the guy that's sniper and he's fucking with her? Because he's done that a few times up to this movie. Is he innocent? What's going on here? I think that whole sequence of the movie is probably the highlight. I really enjoyed that whole like good 10 or 15 minutes. And it's another really cool thing that I noticed is the guy that walks in talks a lot like how this sounds a lot like our sniper. So you're like, is this guy it? Is this guy the sniper? Is this guy not the sniper? And it, it's really funny. And also, again, uh, there's a little bit of humor in this movie because he He's telling her this is just a fucked situation this is fucked and you can understand why she's mistrusting of him but on the other hand it is sort of funny because it is a very fucked that, situation that is the moment where the movie starts to reveal something else about it it does um this movie has something you might with that kind of surprised at least me both of us i didn't hear about it in any of the press releases or anything for this movie um this movie is in, is weirdly political um which i was not expecting at all but the movie and it doesn't unveil that right away it's soon as when this character int gets introduced you start to get little hints of like well, huh wait a second that's an interesting line and stuff and then as after this point of the movie we get a lot of political commentary on this film so handled questionably i think it's either gonna work for you or you're gonna feel it's very heavy hissed and, and preachy i don't but i can see where people would see that yes and basically we're trying to find uh, she's trying to figure out who the hell this guy is and the audiences have that's one of the things i really like the movie and the audience i feel are very much in the same page we're in the character's head and we're wondering okay did her husband know that she was having an affair and is the, it did he set her up or is this just some random circumstance? Did she just be at the wrong place at the wrong time? What the fuck is going on? And you can hear the clicking. The audience is right with the with with our heroine, and it's, it, it really works well. We're right on the same page. Um, but then it starts to reveal its cards. What this guy's basically projecting is the stuff we've heard about... He's you know, a mega conspiracy theorist. Yes, very much so. And we're talking about the vaccines are fake. She works for a pharmaceutical company. You know, he tells her a story about his alleged 
alleged daughter and you know him getting a fired and not being able to pay and having to choose this or that and it's stuff like I've known people and I think that's the interesting thing I've known some people I and mean, I don't think I know anyone angry enough to pick up a gun but people who kind of think this same way like the government is bullshit it's all a big conspiracy there was no COVID and a whole bunch of other things and just that the poor men are getting fucked mm -hmm. which is true but the way some people it's twist just, yeah it's true but not like in an actual intelligent way just as an excuse to be a demonstrable bigot. Yeah, and we also hit on the fact of gun violence in America and shootings, which we've happened which over is and over. so fascinating to see, because I've seen other movies do it, but I very, very seldom see other movies that are from a foreign perspective, because the director and the writers are French. This is a, uh, this is a production by Aja. Th these are French people who have lived in America and are familiar with the culture, but looking at, like, American gun culture and like the mass shootings that constantly happen uh, the constant cycle going on there and it's very interesting to see it to uh, see the angle this movie goes on honestly I like it it's very unapologetic in its fact of like the fuck is wrong with this goddamn country and our fucking obsession with guns and shootings? What the hell, guys? I mean, you know, why can't you guys let go of some of your guns? And we're not going to get into a political thing here. This isn't the channel for that. But some people, you can take it. I've heard people take this in very different ways. I take it more as a mirror reflecting back. Like, they're just holding up a mirror and, uh, and shining everything that you hear all the time. Some people say it's not done executed very well. I think it is, because I don't think the movie's saying anything, it's just reflecting, if like, that makes sense. I feel like the movie is saying something, but it I... It depends on how you take it. Yeah, it depends on how you take it. And stuff. I, I can see people saying that. I vehemently disagree with that. I don't think that was remotely the intention. To me, the sniper reads as an incredible... As what, they, what these types of people actually are, incredibly pathetic. Um, but I, I can see some people see uh, watching this and seeing, like, okay, like, it's the same types of people who argue that say uh, Travis Bickle is like a hero in Taxi Driver even though he absolutely fucking isn't. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing and it's all like everything with art it's about your perception and your well, how you perceive everything and I, I look at it as just as just uh, as people from the outside looking in and kind of reflecting a mirror and saying okay guys this is kind of what you guys look like to the rest of the world mm -hmm. and maybe the picture isn't so pretty but I really like it and like I said this director also directed Maniac, which is a lot of people's favorite that, that, films. That remake's really good. I also really like, we only watched it last year for Christmas, but I really like P2, and there's quite a few similarities to, especially in, like, the, like, hyper-toxic masculinity that our, that our, kill, that our villain in that movie uh, kind of represented and stuff. Like, there's a lot of similarities between the two movies. It, there is, but if you can get past all the political stuff, this is a very fun movie. It's not doing anything new under the sun, but it's a fun and enjoyable movie and I think it is worth your time. I think some people are going to get a little bit more out of it than others, but you could totally take it as just a fun standard, you know, kind of thriller action movie and have a pretty good time. And if you want to analyze the political subtext, you can. Um, I, but I, either way, I think you're going to enjoy this movie. I think there are going to be some people who are a little bit annoyed, but I think the majority of people are going to enjoy it. I can totally see and hear people saying like, okay, I've had, I have to hear these fucking dickheads on the internet constantly. I don't want to have to watch a movie listening to these people ramble constantly on about bullshit. Um, I can totally understand. I can totally understand. It's not something I particularly enjoy having to listen to after being on the internet so long, but it does work for the movie, I feel like. I feel like it's not just there just to, like, annoy the audience or to, like, instantly think. I feel like the movie actually does have it there for a reason, and it does work well for the story. It might... I am in the camp that says it might have... They might have pushed it a a little bit much and might have been a little too heavy-handed with their messaging even though I completely agree with their messaging but, but this is you know this is a team that is not known for yes, its subtlety exactly it's a for, he didn't write or direct it but Alexander Aja's name is still attached to it that man is not known for his fucking subtlety and that's something I love about him yeah um so I'm not remotely surprised that this movie has the subtlety and nuance of a sledgehammer in its messaging and there are people out there who believe the only way you can get someone to hear your message is if you hit them as hard as a sledgehammer that is and I don't think it like maybe I'm not as smart as some but I really I saw what the political subject
subtext was, but I didn't think it was all that heavy handed. Again, I just saw it as a, I just saw that the movie is a mirror holding up and just kind of shining a light on that side. You can take, I can see how other people would take it different ways, but that's how I interpreted the film. And overall, the only, my only real issue is, is we, ha it's nothing new under the sun. And yeah, it's very much a little standard. Bit of, yeah, phone booth, ATM, P2, but and it's like downrange well. all kind of mixed together a little bit. I would say like, downrange did it Downrange better. did do this a little bit better. Like yeah. if you want a movie, if, if you watch this movie and it didn't really work for you and you haven't seen it, go check out Ryo, Ryohei Kanemura's Downrange. That movie is fucking excellent and one of my favorite sleeper films of like the last uh, five or seven years. It's a great flick. I would, what would you give this for a right? I give this like a neutral leaning towards a positive. Like it's nothing, it's not going to blow you away I feel, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think you're going to hate it either. I, there's some really good stuff where this movie's going. What is going to, this what will either like sell this movie for being like a little bit above average or like maybe not maybe make the movie not work for you completely is probably its political messaging regardless of the political aisle sides you're on I could I can see a lot of people saying either way this movie is very heavy-handed and okay we get it can we do something else and stuff but again it's from the fucking <laughs> team that did P2 and high tension so I am not remotely <laughs> surprised that it's a little that, it, that it's not very subtle and they're and they're Frenchmen making it for dumb Americans. Yeah, exactly. The French people pandering to dumb Americans, you know. Um, for my little rating, I had a good time. This I, ain't no Gaspar Noé film. I, for me, I really, I enjoyed the film for what it was. It, 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 it for the most part, I enjoyed it. It, like I said, I wish we, for Aj, I was expecting a little, I could have handled a little bit more gore, a little bit more shocking. There, there could have been something toward the end, which I don't want to spoil, that I wish, I kind of wish we would have gone a little more hardcore, but that's just me. I do too, but I do like the ending. But yeah, I, I enjoy the ending too, but I wouldn't have been upset if he had gone in a different direction with a little bit more hardcore. But overall, I enjoyed my time with the movie. I had fun with it, and I don't think it's going to waste anybody's time. I give it a B, a solid B. I think it's, and it's not one maybe not on the top of your pile, but it's definitely something you should check out, especially if you've watched most of the movies that have come out by now, and this one slipped under your radar. It's on Shudder. If you have Shudder, definitely add it to your watch list and watch it sooner rather than later. For sure, for sure. So, with all that out of the way, I think that is all we have to say about Night of the Hunted. And as always, booze and ghouls, we thank you so much for watching. Um, we're, 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 it's November, so we've got some plans. Not as big of plans as October, but we do have some plans. So we hope you guys will keep tuning in. And in the meantime, keep watching Talking Horror, and we'll be back in our next video. See you then, guys. Bye. Cheers.